excited to be here today talking about Story Garden. Um, we'll give you a little bit of a context about the place in which we were uh, assigned to create this experience, a little bit about the company and the collaborators that we worked with, uh, the process, and how it all turned out, and some of the lessons that we learned along the way. But first, a little video. In creating the Amori Pacific Story Garden, I visited many other brand centers throughout Asia. With BRC's help, I wanted ours to be truly unique. Our message is simple, but powerful. Beauty is a gift that can transform our world. I know it's just a factory tour, but it feels more like a high-end art gallery. To me, this is what storytelling is all about. It's not just about telling our story as the company, but also the story of the visitors. That's how you make a connection. That's what a brand center should be. a lot of time in Korea or in Asia, you may not be yet familiar with Amori Pacific, but it is the, the largest skincare and cosmetics company in Korea. Uh, it has a long and storied history and it is expanding throughout the globe. Uh, they are rooted, they have this history that is really deeply rooted in the science and the nature of Asian botanicals. Um, they're an extremely modern company, but they also have this really deep heritage that they are rooted in. And so they were building this brand new factory uh, about 30 miles outside of Seoul. Very modern, state-of-the-art, cutting edge. But at the same time, they were already, as a company, headed in a direction where they were really trying to walk the walk in every respect and talk the talk. They were trying to marry the idea of what their values were as a company rooted in the Asian botanical and the scientific process and also just the factory process. So they made this factory that really extends to that. It is a botanical garden. When you arrive at it, you walk in through a garden. That is how employees approach the place every day. Visitors who are coming there approach the place. And they had saved a little bit of space inside of the factory that they wanted to do a, a small museum that really gave homage to the start of the company, to the father of the CEO, who was uh, CEO Chairman Sa, who was the founder of Amore Pacific. So one day Chairman Sa is on a business trip in Amsterdam. He's walking down the road. He sees a group of people crossing, young people crossing the street and going into what turned out to be the Heineken experience. He walks across the street, he goes through, he comes back out of that experience 
goes back to Korea and says, please find out who designed that. I have a new idea for what to do with our museum. We want to take it to another level. So that was how the idea evolved, and that was how they found us, the RC. So Story Garden is a 10,000 square foot uh, visitor experience that is located on the campus. Uh, it tells the story of the heritage of the company, and it also extends to leaving just a very, very powerful but really simple message in the hearts of every person who comes through. So the message that we wanted to leave with everybody was a real simple theme and idea, which is beauty is a gift that can transform the world. Uh, the chairman's father, uh, when he started the company uh, right after World War II, uh, had this, this concept of that learning from his mother who could make a real change in the world through doing things that would make the world more beautiful. And to give people an opportunity, especially women in Korea, a chance to have their own businesses, uh, strive to be something different than what society had dictated that they should be. Um, and especially after the Civil War, uh, giving them great opportunities to find their own way and literally created the beauty culture that is now in Korea. So that was a, a theme statement that guided our work and we see it uh, translated in every piece of the design. So Story Garden's audience, uh, we always start with the heart of the audience and who they are. Um, the primary audience for us were beauty counselors, some public, but a lot of the partners that are part of the Amori Pacific story. These are the women that we were just mentioning. Um, a lot of the women have been with the company for 40 plus years. Uh, a lot of them lost their husbands, uh, lost their sons during the war, and were given an opportunity to make their own businesses. Uh, spending time with them was key because we needed to find the values that were in their hearts, the things that they loved about Amori Pacific, but more importantly, how they shared that story with so many other people on a day to day basis, whether it's engaging in a store. Uh, engaging with them one-on-one -on -one in their homes. Their customers were really part of their family and life, and we needed to become part of that family in order to really understand the deep values of Maury Pacific and find the cues of what would become Asian beauty. Through that, we developed a series of design objectives, uh, which were primarily driven on telling meaningful stories. Uh, the humble beginning of, of the chairman learning from his mother in a, in a small kitchen in North Korea, the state of North Korea, learning how to how to press canola seeds in order to make oils that would be transforming uh, hair products and skin care later on, the creation of the Korean women's workforce after the Civil War. Uh, the chairman, uh, his fa his father, the founder, there's he's one of three people who have their own coin in Korea, in South Korea, because of what they did for society. Uh, and then the whole idea of equality and, and research and development. Out of those, uh, those objectives, we also developed uh, a series of ways of sort of techniques for uh, achieving that. One of the key things was an original score. Um, we actually wrote a, uh, a pop song, uh, a brand new song for, and if, if you know Korea, Korea is known for their music, uh, K-pop, uh, YG, all the good stuff. But we actually worked with a Korean writer and composer to do a new song for the company. And then we took that song and we deconstructed it. And we, we broke it up all the way through every single scene that the visitor would walk through. So as they go through the experience, they start to hear the song in their heart. At the very end, they hear it for the first time with words. And they already can hum it. And they can already sing it. They, we want them to leave that experience with that in their heart. Uh, we had a wonderful life plan and color script that went with every gallery. I'm happy to announce that we have Mark in the room here. We have a lot of partners in this project who helped us with, with this project. Uh, Single visual motif. We use the Camilla flower because um, for Amori Pacific, it's it's essential for green tea, which is one. Of, they're only they're one of the only they are the only skincare company in the world that has their own green tea fields. We make some of the best tea in the world if you ever get a chance to go and, and taste it. It's called Oxalic. But it's also really important for the very first products that his mother made. So the Camilla flower actually becomes this threat that is blooms in the, in winter in the coldest part of the year, lives its life, and then sort of fades away and sort of is reborn. We want that sort of motif to travel through and you see it in. 
so the context within which we were working, we had 10,000 square feet spread across three floors, some very narrow spaces. It was a really, really challenging project from that perspective. Uh, in addition to that, um, we had only 13 months from the time we started really getting into deep concept and story development to the time that we had to open. We had a very hard open. It was the 68th anniversary of Amore Pacific. So it was really kind of like shooting out of a cannon. But at the same time, any of you who have worked uh, in Asia and, and in many parts of the world, you know, you really need to take the time to develop and deepen the relationships. You need to get to know who your client is. You need to get really deep in to the weeds. What we had to do was to do that at the same time that we developed a complete facility impact package within the first 12 weeks of starting the project. Um, and, you know, having to really pancake all of those things that you have to do when you start a project where we're having to do story development design and we're having to do uh, show set and the lighting and all of the facility and scoring, all of these thousands of, of components that need to come together and be integrated and orchestrated into this sort of perfect landing 13 months later. We often had to do things out of sequence and do things in a way that we weren't comfortable. And I'm sure, you know, we've been experiencing this a lot over the last probably five or 10 years. I'm sure tons of people in this room are having that same experience. And you also know if you work on the integration and the, the, the installation end of this experience, that all of that stuff tends to roll downhill. And then there were also external forces that were, that were on top of us the entire time, having to work uh, in Korea, having to deal with customs issues. There were all kinds of things that were huge obstacles. And one of the keys, which we'll touch on a little bit later about one of the lessons learned for us on this, one of the keys to doing that was really embedding ourselves with this client and really deepening a relationship with them so that together we could overcome the things that would come our way in, an, in, in our effort uh, to get the thing completed on time. So some of the process and methodology uh, is Carmel was just mentioning. We worked with design, R&D. Uh, we worked with uh, leadership team directly. Direct access to the chairman, uh, absolutely. Uh, very, busy, very busy guy. But, um, and you can see some of the photos here of us working side by side with everybody from the luxury brand team. It's really, really understanding how, what is Asian beauty and how do we tell that in a, how do we express that in an aesthetic? that would sort of relate to the overall product and values of the brand. This is the, this is the layout. So they had developed the whole beauty campus and they had the space sitting there vacant and said, what do we do? And it wasn't an ideal space. Um, some of the ceilings were, you know, very, you know, not, weren't very high. Uh, it was sort of disjointed. It was on three different levels. So we came in and we were able to ser uh, start to develop a, a concept that would Take the visitors from the garden into this beautiful uh, main lobby, which is full of wonderful art. One of the things that the company collects is art from all over the world. Beautiful art. If you've ever been to LACMA and if you've been to the Asian galleries, they're actually sponsored by Amore Pacific. So art is a key aspect of everything we look at. And then as we weave people through the first scenes in the dark gray on the first floor, uh, in scene two, there's a theater you saw that had a living painting. You saw it probably in the video. One of those walls actually opens up and we reveal the mother's kitchen. We travel at that point into the history of, of the company. And then we travel up into an elevator to the top floor where we have uh, a chance to look out into the factory. And then we let gravity feed people back down through a series of, of galleries that are very artistic, but once again are scored from room to room. And emotionally, they're different at every single point until it come home and expect to see. So here's uh, kind of a quick walkthrough of each of those spaces. This is the design intent um, and also the design uh, outcome for the welcome lobby, which was the, the inspiration that was snow and that first sort of sense of when the vanilla uh, unfolds. This is the living painting gallery uh, that comes to life. And, on, and that, the, that the screen that they're looking at the front, that, that whole wall opens up and you walk through that into the next part of the screen. That's the initial, uh, that's the mother's kitchen, a simulation of what her kitchen was like, and you can actually smell the, the vanilla seeds and some of the aromas. 
and then the founding of the company and sort of the first mini gallery about the story that unfolds over, over 70 years. From there, we travel up through a series of elevators. There's a lighting effect and a bunch of things that we did that aren't shown in the video uh, out to where uh, you can see into the factory. It's one of the most beautiful factories in the world that we've ever worked in. We work on a lot of visitor centers and tours. Uh, into an area, here's a, what it was, the raw space was, and here's where we ended up with the gift area. They're, they do a lot of social programs, uh, a lot of uh, give back programs for women with cancer. Treat their treat them, give them a sense of beauty. There's a lot of uh, programs around uh, other things that they're doing. And these are the art, artistic installations. We took the values of the company, their five key values, and we turned them each into their own uh, artistic installation and expression. Innovation, so proximity, sincerity, challenge, <laughs> and then in chance of gift of creativity, we let people create uh, their own uh, photo uh, off here. This image is not only collected and they're able to get it as part of the gift. It's, these are calendars from all their different periods of, of, of Mori Pacific's history. But then that photo ends up in the show that they're going to see in, in the last space. And this is what the last area looked like. Here's the final show. And this is where that song comes to life. For them. Um, so we went from and then a gift of sharing, it was important for us to memorialize the experience for, for visitors. And you saw in the video people logging in and, and customizing their experience. But at the very end, each visitor gets a gift. And they actually get their own uh, customized lipstick, okay. photos, and other things. So lessons learned and things that we really, um, it was such a challenging project. And the fact that it was just, it was incredibly important to us. And it was incredibly important to the client team that we become one team, that there, there was no difference between the two of us. Uh, and, and that really helped us. It helped the client feel as though they could reach the finish line and that there wasn't going to become, we had all of these adversarial forces, so there couldn't be any, anything adversarial between us. So there was, a, there was a lot of Korean barbecue. There was a lot of drinking. There was, uh, there was, you know, we were doing like a lot of planking. We would, we would do like planking where we would, you know, get on the ground and try to see who could hold their plank longest. Um, you know, they took us out to Jeju Island. It was really important for them to have us go to the founder's home and where he was buried, his burial site, and to go out to Jeju Island to actually visit the fields in which they uh, make the raw ingredients where they grow the raw ingredients for their products. Um, and, and they took us actually to this ridge uh, in one of their tea fields out in Jeju Island. And that ridge was the very ridge that the founder first went to when he decided that he was going to revive uh, the tea culture in Korea. I, it, had, it had really fallen off and died. And it was that ridge where he sort of stood at the, at the, at the foot of a volcanic mountain and looked out over the ocean and said, this is the place where I'm going to, to start this, um, this whole adventure. And uh, it was so important to them, even if we didn't touch on all of these things in the experience, uh, it was so important to them that we really understood all of those things, that we really understood where they were coming from. And uh, it was an extremely, it was an extremely difficult experience, I know, for, for our production team and for all of our partners that, that helped to work with us on it. I mean, we had major, like, customs nightmares where it was like, well, we're opening in six weeks and the show control system cannot make it through customs. Um, at which point we put somebody on a plane to London and they packed underwear around the, <laughs> packed under around a, show system and yes so that's what you just have to do so we did what we had to do to get the show open people you all know what i'm talking about uh and the client was extremely grateful and and i think frankly surprised uh that we were willing to do anything that we had to do to get that opening day um so there we are one team but you know the reason that you do these things, as you everybody knows, it's not it's not for us. Um, ultimately, it's for the audience. And having spent so much time with the with the, with the women in Korea who this was for, um, 
seeing them come through and seeing these photos and seeing them cry. A lot of them cry mm -hmm. when they come through and they see the story of the chairman. Uh, for the young people who are just starting with the company, to see the legacy and the history, that's what we do it for. It's something that touches your heart. Um, it's not about, you know, it's beautiful spaces, great art all the time. But ultimately, it's about creating something that's meaningful, that makes a difference in the world. So that's our, that's the project. We do have time for questions. Pat, we'll start with you first. You mentioned door-to-door uh, -door sales, and you mentioned it. Is there a company model like the Avon model? Part of it. Part of it. So the women that they're uh, that you're profiling are they? Yeah, they they have. They they are really they're a multi-billion-dollar company. I mean, it's a it's a massive organization. They they have about they have over twenty different lines of skincare and cosmetic makeup that they make everything from two hundred dollar a bottle uh, turn back time cream um, to you know sort of like a your sparkly teenage lip gloss you know like it, the entire spectrum is covered but really that whole idea and they still do have this um, they still do have this as a part of their company this whole idea of women's sales representatives and door to door what where it started was after the korean war uh their their the country was in such disarray that so many men had died during the war and the idea of a beauty culture did not exist in korea and so these women um essentially chairman the the chairman and founder at the time um had the idea of putting giving these women purpose and giving them an avenue for being able to make a living and at the same time, they had to go door to door because it was considered immodest for you to go to a department store and buy makeup. So the idea of door to door was that you would have someone who would come into the privacy of your own home and would teach you how to take care of your skin and would teach you how to put on makeup. Uh, and that was an idea that to this day, they still do it because I think it is a part of that thread and their heritage, but I think it, it takes up. Yeah. One percent of their overall business. I mean, you can you can, you can get, find you them can. At, at Sephora. You know, yeah, Amore you can, Pacific is right. sold at Sephora or and Bloomingdale's. I mean, their high end Nina stuff Marcus. is in the top the top uh, stores in the world. Um, New York, they have a flagship store, so they're definitely store driven. But they have this one element, as Carmel said, that uh, that still goes back to that sort of modest and in the home because they're more comfortable with that in terms of. In terms of stuff. And that photo that of the women, we went to us. They took us to a sales rep meeting where they have this monthly meeting, and all of the all of their uh, sales are posted, and the woman who sells the most stuff, you know, gets a prize or an award. And they were a lot of older women, women who probably have been working for this company in anywhere from twenty upwards of thirty years. It was it was actually really it was really touching, very moving. The second question is: We have a theme going on here today. Uh, at least half of projects we've looked at have stressed that it was about the values, it was about the core values. And you, you started to list the five core values and then you stopped, I think, after the fourth. So we always ask, we've been asking today, what are the core values? It's, uh, it's openness, uh, innovation, uh, proximity, creativity, creativity. and challenge. For them, though internally within their company, those are five core values. And so, in in all of their internal, um, in all of their internal documents, training that they give to their employees, those five values are emphasized over and over again. Uh, that you know it is important for you to face challenges and overcome them. It is important for you proximity to stay close to your customer, to know who they are, uh, to connect with them. Uh, it is important for you to to be creative in the work that you do. So for those, those were company core values that they applied to themselves, and that we took and sort of extrapolated into um, art installation exhibits, walk through sort of immersive exhibits. Great. Is there another question? All right. Well, then let's. Is there another question? Nope. Then let's thank. 
Christian and Carmel, thank you so much.